thank you so much for joining us today. Um, absolutely thrilled to, to have uh, so many people on the call. Um, before we begin, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're gathered today. Uh, for where I'm situated, that is the Gadigal and Wongol people of the Aurora Nation, I pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. So I work as part of the Google News Initiative, which is Google's effort to build a stronger future for journalism. My role focuses on the first of these three E's, that is to elevate and strengthen quality journalism. Uh, the other areas of focus for the GNI are evolving business models through programs such as Subscribe with Google and also empowering news organizations through tech and innovation. Uh, that last bit is mainly achieved through the development of tools for journalists. Um, but there are new things coming all the time. Um, and I'm going to take you through a couple of those new products uh, in the next little while. In order to keep journalists um, up to date with the latest tools for finding and telling news stories, we have developed a training website, which is up on the screen right now. It's g.co slash news training. It's your news training on demand. Um, this site allows you to basically stay up to date on different elements of digital journalism from finding um, stories online to verifying information and also visualizing stories on the web. We also have a teaching fellow who can take you through the basics over video conference. Um, he's on the call right now. Uh, that's former AAP editorial trainer, Miguel D'Souza. Um, Miguel, I might get you to give everybody a quick wave. Hi, everyone. There he is, handsome chap. Um, he's available for, uh, for training much like this, um, so we'll um, get Miguel to pop his email address in the chat there to get us started as well, and you can email him directly. To, Thank you very much. Uh, um, yeah, now anybody, if you would like some training for your newsroom or your uh, editorial team or whatever you like uh, in uh, News Fundamentals, please get in touch. I'll uh, make sure that I share uh, the link for the uh, uh, news training website as well in there. Amazing. Thank you so much. So, um, it's kind of the public service announcements. Um, my role at Google is, uh, is unique. It's a 12-month fellowship with a very clear goal. Uh, my goal is to help local, regional and small publishers build stronger businesses through both training and support. Um, I got my first experience in journalism at my local paper, uh, the Lithgow Mercury, when I was 15. And for the first two years of my career, I spent them serving local communities as a reporter. Um, and I'm just absolutely thrilled to be in this role at this really important time for, for local news. Most recently led uh, News Corp Shift to Digital by building a national training program for newsrooms. Uh, I trained over a thousand journalists in social media search and mobile video, also taught journalists and editors how to maximize readership and revenue. And it's great to see some of my uh, former news colleagues on the call today. I also launched uh, social news startup Storyful in Australia. Uh, it was the first of its kind service providing publishers and brands with social media to use in their storytelling. Uh, I was also previously uh, head of social media at the ABC, uh, leading that business through a period of fairly dramatic change. Uh, and I'm currently a sessional lecturer at UTS teaching digital journalism. Uh, to first year students, which I absolutely love. Um, as you would have heard from the start, I was talking to Carolyn Keynes. Uh, I have a cattle farm in country New South Wales and a uh, 13 month old uh, named Molly. But um, don't get me started on either of those two things or we'll get absolutely nothing else done. Um, just before we go any further, uh, there is a Q&A feature in Google Meet. Um, you can ask questions through there. You can also upvote your favorites and I'll draw from those as we go through the session. Um, and uh, Miguel will hopefully sort of pull a couple of those out as well if I miss them as we go. Um, so maybe we could just start now, just let us know where you're coming from. So which publisher uh, you are coming from and currently working for, or if you're freelance. Um, and also, uh, I guess one thing that you're hoping to get out of the workshop so that we make sure that we get that done for you. Also, after this, we will uh, send through the recording so that you have uh, every minute uh, of this workshop 
I'll also send through a, a glossary of terms because there are quite a, a lot of terms that will come at you thick and fast as we move through. Um, and I'll also send through uh, notes from the workshop as well so that you, you have all of that stuff at your disposal. We'll also send out a very short feedback form um, that basically allows us to continue to improve these sessions and also make the case for this kind of work uh, within Google itself. So here we are. This is what we'll cover in the next session. Um, I'm sorry, I actually have the wrong slide deck. So I'm gonna have to stop there. My apologies. Talk, some, talk amongst yourselves. Um, Miguel, this might be a good opportunity to bring you I was, in. And I was just going to actually say, I'm going to grab the opportunity. Um, it, if uh, anybody here is uh, actually interested, where um, I did share the news, Google News Initiative website, but if you do run uh, a small editorial team or a small uh, or a large newsroom, um, I would love to talk to you. And please um, send me an email if you've got a minute. Uh, about bringing um, some Google News training. We cover everything from sort of advanced search through using a, a visualization. I do apologize for the birds and the plane, um, which are competing with me. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, Google search, some verification tools, people searching online, um, account verification and um, bot detection on Twitter. Um, you know, we look at uh, things like Pinpoint and stuff like that, which is uh, Pinpoint is a fantastic new database and an analysis tool. And if any of you are even in the sort of features or broadcast area, um, you'll be amazed at what it can do uh, in terms of uh, audio transcription as well. Um, so lots and lots of really fantastic things. So please um, send me uh, uh, an email if you can, if you're interested, and, and let's have a chat. Uh, I just see that there's a question there, I think, from Amanda. <laughs> yeah, I know. Actually, yeah, uh, and yeah, maybe we can get some details about that that uh, that other course that you were uh, uh, you were almost about. To ask. <laughs> it actually, did look pretty good. Yeah. Uh, good suggestion, Amanda. I'm with you there. Um, are I you am. ready to? Go I, ahead? Am. I am. I am. My sincere apologies. Uh, amazing red face moment to start. Um, <laughs> let's get back into it. Um, there are a number of, as Amanda pointed out, there are a number of uh, sessions that are to come. We haven't really announced them yet, but they, they certainly we did get a sneak peek just now. Um, so yeah, over, yeah, over, the, um, over the next uh, couple of months, we'll start to um, release these into the wild. Um, we'll have some sessions on, on how to lead through change, which will be a lot of fun. Um, there's some productivity stuff that I'll do as well, which is all of my favorite tools um, to, to help you get more out of your day. Um, we'll also have some stuff that's quite focused on revenue as well, which is a big thing that we've been asked um, a lot about um, from, from uh, a variety of publishers. Um, so all of that stuff is certainly uh, certainly to come. So um, Oh, man. I've literally just grabbed the same thing again, haven't I? There we go. There we go. Goodness me. Um, all right. Here we go. Anyone know how to use Google Meet? Give me a quick tip. Miguel? Yep. <laughs> no, I've got it. That's all right. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I'm still learning as well, so don't worry. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, let me see if that is. There you go. Thank you. All right, hopefully that is the that 
is the right one and that will hopefully appear for you guys now. Is, is everybody seeing that? Should say how to build an audience-led strategy. If not, I've completely lost my yep. mind. Looking all good. Thank you, sir. Not quite sure whether I've had too much coffee or not enough coffee today, um, but uh, we will move on. Um, thank you for bearing with me. Um, so one of the fundamental differences, I guess, between print and digital publishing is, um, is the deeper understanding that you can get um, about your audience online um, and also how they're, how they're behaving. So I guess, look, if we take a, um, a traditional uh, view of things, so imagine that you're standing over the shoulder of your readers as they uh, flip through uh, your publication. Uh, you're able to see uh, how much time they spend on every page, every story, every picture, every ad. Um, analytics allows you to do that um, on the web. And we're going to show you how to do that today. Um, what this means for you, I guess, as journalists, publishers, product people and sales people, uh, is that it allows you to use this data to create more engaging stories, build better digital products, and tell more compelling stories to advertisers to make them spend more money with you. So that's the goal here, to build a better business through data, and this all starts and ends with the audience. This is not the Fonz from Happy Days. This is uh, Justin, who is our Director of Education at Google. Um, when I started at Storeful, I had one goal, which was uh, to increase the number of journalists using our Newswire product. I thought that if I could increase the number of users, I deepen engagement with our business and success would flow from there. Fortunately, it did. Um, we doubled the amount of Australian users in the first 90 days, which started a process that led to us posting a million dollars in revenue in our first year. Now, Justin, as I mentioned, is our Director of Education at Google and a certified data nerd, and he looks at analytics a little bit like this. So the goal of web analytics is to increase our business outcomes. That is the goal. Um, so before we go any further, um, I want you guys to just write down one goal or one target like I did, um, something that you can achieve over the next 12 months. Um, it might be as simple as increasing the subscribers um, to your publication. It might be getting more traffic to your stories. It might be increasing video views on your website. Absolutely anything. Uh, and, and hopefully we'll find a way of measuring that today. So Justin goes on to say, um, this is the first of many gifts, so prepare yourself. Uh, I do love an animated gift, so this is the first uh, entry level gift for the session. Um, Justin goes on to say, web analytics help us understand our audience and their needs and help us make better online experiences for them. Now, depending on what you wrote down, that might mean that you want to drive more subscriptions and analytics will enable us to focus on what makes them subscribe. Now, uh, that is a little bit more than getting them to click. Um, it's about getting them to hand over their money, which is a whole different ballgame, as many on the call will know. Um, we need to be incredibly attuned to where they see value in what you do in order to uh, convert them into a subscriber. All right, so let's let's dig into the tool. I've already wasted enough of your time. Um, so in simple words, uh, Google Analytics is, is a free tracking tool by Google that allows you to see how visitors use your website. Um, there are a bunch of other tracking tools out there. Uh, they're all good. Um, I've, got a, um, I've got a Squarespace uh, website for my, um, my Airbnb and my farm, um, and it has amazing analytics built in. So uh, you can use Google Analytics. It's, it's free, um, but uh, there are a bunch of others out there, and certainly everything I'll speak about over the next uh, half an hour, uh, we'll talk to all of those different tools. Um, they'll have much the same sort of information in them. So let's take a completely random example because that's what I like to do. Say you're an e-commerce store and you want to know how many uh, users visit your site. Uh, with an analytics tool like Google Analytics, you can see the number of uh, visitors to your online store, where they're coming from, which device they're using uh, to get there, and much, much more. What we're seeing now is a typical view of the Google Analytics dashboard. Uh, you can see your total sessions, 
uh, how many pages per session, uh, how many of these were new sessions, average session duration, a lot of sessions, uh, and the total number of users and page views. You can also see how many of these users are new versus returning. Um, new users are important, um, but again, from my time at News, uh, returning visitors are the most valuable, or certainly were the most valuable for us. Um, they stay longer on average, and they are more likely to engage with other products and services. It's also probably worth spending a little bit of time now talking about the much demonized bounce rate. Um, it is certainly worth clarifying. Um, it's basically the percentage of single session visits. Um, so someone coming in once, not going anywhere else on, on the website and basically exiting from whence they came. Um, this could flag a few things for you. It might mean that they were able to find what they needed right away, which is a good thing. Um, so you really need to be careful about how you interpret that bounce rate. Um, more often than not, it is seen as being a bad thing, but it basically just means that they've come in, they've done something, and then they've gone back out again. It, it could necessarily um, be a good thing. As I mentioned, I will have handouts um, that I'll send through that summarize all of these terms. Um, so don't worry too much if already you're kind of lost in the uh, swarm of sessions um, as, we've, as we've kind of gone through this stuff so far. That will be straight on your email. So Google Analytics can also tell you more specific things about your users. Um, this is Peter, or Double Beard, as I like to call him. Um, you won't know his name, but you can tell what device he used to access your website. Uh, you can also see what Peter clicked on when he came to your website. For example, uh, Peter came from Facebook. As I mentioned, analytics won't give you personally identifiable information. Um, you, you can't you can't learn who they are, um, but you can get aggregated uh, and anomalized information. Um, things like demographic, um, age, uh, location, all of that stuff is available to you within most analytics tools. So one example of how we use this uh, when I was at the ABC was in prioritizing the rollout of our mobile optimized pages. Um, so we saw that roughly 30% of visits to our news pages were coming from mobile devices, um, despite the fact that the experience for them at that point was terrible. Um, so we basically used that data to serve the most loyal and the biggest audience first. So we rolled out changes to ABC News website first uh, and then simplified our work schedule at the same time. So, so many different things that you can do with analytics beyond just measuring how your content is performing. GA also gives you real-time information on when users are visiting your site. Um, you can look at things like uh, time of day, uh, days of the week, uh, seasonality like Anzac Day, public holidays, Christmas Day. Um, you could use the data for Christmas Day, for example, uh, to decide what rostering is required based on last year's data. Um, if you have no traffic after 2 p.m., um, you might roster your web editor to go home at 2 to enjoy a late lunch with their family. Um, this is probably one of my favorite parts of, uh, of the tool or any analytics tool, um, as you can understand when your audience is consuming content across the day. Um, this is the kind of data that you can use to make decisions as to when staff start, um, when you roll over various parts of the website, and maybe when and how you promote stories on email or social media or elsewhere. For example, if your audience rushes to the website first thing in the morning, a midnight rollover of yesterday's news just won't cut it. Um, you might start a senior journalist uh, on the first shift of the web team, say, at uh, 5 a.m., uh, so that it's fresh and up-to-date for 6 a.m. when everyone's logging on. Um, this gives your print product, if you've got one, a, a bit of a kick as well, as you're well on top of the news when the rest of the team logs on for the day. Um, and again, that's a real-world example um, from something that we trialled at news. Um, the guys on the call might be able to tell me if this is rolled out across the business. I imagine it was deeply unpopular, um, having someone start at 5 a.m., um, but it's something that gave uh, 
that particular newsroom a massive advantage over their competitors, not only online, but also in the print product, which supported uh, the online um, product. Uh, before we uh, go any further, are there any questions out there? Has anyone left the call board? No, we still got everyone, that's good. Um, no questions before we move on? There we go. Either I'm winning or I'm losing, it's hard to tell. <laughs> All right, so um, the other things that we can, uh, we can discover uh, from looking at analytics is uh, also where they're coming from in the world. Um, we recently did a little bit of piece of work with uh, the Narendra Argus, Argus, which is a, a, a community newspaper. Um, they discovered that they had a small number of readers uh, coming from, um, you know, Colombia, which I'm not going to cast any dispersions there. Um, we also did have a, uh, a little project that we ran with 40 South, which is a, um, a quarterly magazine down in uh, Tasmania. Um, they realised through analytics that they had a very um, committed and large expatriate audience. So Tasmanians that had gone off to the rest of the world uh, and, and then they were able to start to think about how they better served that audience. Um, so they basically were able to dramatically increase their traffic by doing uh, posts to the website and scheduling posts on social media uh, in the evening and in the early morning when that audience was awake and the rest of their audience in Australia was hopefully asleep. Um, there's other things that you could do. You could build an expat kind of uh, weekly news briefing, for instance, um, all sorts of different stuff you can learn uh, and do once you sort of understand where people are coming from in the world. So this is the final thing that I'll say about numbers um, before we kind of uh, go into some other stuff. Um, basically, GA allows you uh, to answer these sorts of questions. So what they click on, uh, where they come from, uh, what they are doing when they arrive, and how long they are staying. Um, and importantly, you can also understand where they go to next. Um, so what is the next website that they go to? So looking at the full circle of, of what that might look for one user, uh, they might come into your website from Facebook, they might click on one story about um, the lawyer who accidentally turned the cat filter on on a Zoom call yesterday. Um, they might go to other cat-related content. I mean, who doesn't like cats? Um, and then they might disappear back out to Facebook again. Um, so you can really understand a lot about um, users within a, uh, within a fairly short period of time. Miguel, I think this is only the second animated GIF. This might be a little bit gif like this presentation. You're Maybe doing quite well, actually, today. Yeah, I Your might. Tablets uh, are working. Yeah, I might throw a few more GIFs in uh, after this call, but... Um, yeah, basically it allows you to understand exactly what they're doing on your website. So which articles are generating uh, the most clicks for you, uh, which article thumbnails are generating the most clicks, uh, what style of imagery is resonating with different types of demographics, uh, which headlines increase click-through rate. All of this stuff is very much at your fingertips. So there's a lot of tech jargon at Google. Miguel, you probably, um, yeah. you'd probably agree with that. Um, so we tend to say things like, uh, this organization has really succeeded in targeting me as an archetypal visitor to their website. Um, translated, that just means that these people understand me. Um, so that's the, that's the kind of the goal, that's where we're trying to get to, is to just really deeply understand uh, the audience, people like our good friend, Peter Twobeard. Okay, so something I struggled with a little bit when I first um, started getting more involved in data as, as part of the jobs that, that I've had, um, was kind of understanding, I guess, the, the difference between data and insight. Um, when I first had a, a job of looking after the social media uh, websites at, at the ABC, I would you know, look at my dashboards and I would see all of this information and didn't really know what most of it meant. So I would just send these 
reports that would just highlight, you know, numbers. Um, but my my directors would kind of look at this stuff and go, I don't really know what this is telling me. So that's the kind of key difference. So I thought it was worth pulling out um, as it was certainly something that took me a little while to learn. Um, so the way that I think about it is that, um, you know, data is, uh, is a useful bit of new information and an insight is how you can act on it. Um, there we go. So what I'm going to show you next is a bunch of uh, next generation tools that have literally launched, I think, Miguel, in maybe the last four months, four or five months. Um, it's hard to really keep track of time in COVID times. I feel like I've been living in this front room for about five years. Um, but they did launch very, very recently. Um, these are free news industry tools that can help you make um, data-driven decisions, both on the business side and on the editorial side. Um, news Consumer Insights uh, is one, and real-time Content Insights is the other. Um, these guys have been quiet heroes in newsrooms for a little while now, but they've just recently been re-released. Um, and they've come out with a new uh, resource, which is called the News Tagging Guide. All very bad names, um, but basically uh, three new tools that kind of work really, really well together. Uh, Consumer Insights gives publishers uh, recommendations on how to grow uh, engagement and revenue. Um, it helps you understand how your content is performing in real time and also what topics are trending on the web so that you don't miss a story. Um, it's really, really critical. So it basically shows you what's happening both on your website, but also shows you what might be missing. Uh, what are the stories that you may not be covering? Um, News Consumer Insights also has a feature um, that I love, which allows you to turn um, that data into a dashboard, which displays on a screen in your newsroom. Uh, so basically, you can have all of this information, real-time information about what's happening on your website and also potentially uh, the stories that you might be missing. So what else is kind of trending on the web um, up on a beautiful display that you can't miss? Um, as I mentioned, news tagging tool is the new addition to the family. Um, it's a diagnostic tool that allows you to identify audience metrics that you need to capture. Um, so what are the sorts of things that are happening on your website? What are things that, that people are doing that you're not currently capturing in your uh, analytics data? Um, so it's basically a little kind of mini coach uh, inside, uh, inside your computer so that you can you know, work out what's the stuff that you're actually not getting that would provide some value to you. So here's the link up on the screen right now, um, goo.gle slash data tools, easy one to remember. Um, this will give you access to those, uh, those three tools that I mentioned and get you started uh, really quickly with that stuff. I just wanted to really give you a quick look under the hood and show you what it all looks like. Um, I recommend that you play around with all of these tools as they're really designed to work together. Um, the only caveat is that this is really focused on GA, so you do have, a, have to have a Google Analytics login to be able to access these guys. Um, what's really, really cool about Consumer Insights, which I haven't mentioned yet, is uh, it has a built-in decision engine that focuses on uh, engagement and revenue, which I did mention. Um, but it also tells you uh, like really cool things like, um, have you thought about doing a newsletter? Or uh, have you thought about moving this button to another location? Um, it's really, really uh, detailed and specific information that really allows you to make um, better decisions and, and capture more of the data you need. As I mentioned, just log in with your GA account details. If you don't have GA and you need hand uh, setting that stuff up, uh, please email me. I'll have my email at the end, but uh, it's neilvarko at google.com. Um, and uh, yeah, really happy to get you set up on that. So this, uh, this session is really designed to be fast and make the most of your time, probably not as fast as I've done it, to be honest. Um, so we do have plenty of time uh, to talk about 
uh, anything you want to talk about, any questions you might have, um, we can get those answers for you right now. Um, as I mentioned, we've got Miguel de Souza on the call so he can answer any questions you have about uh, how to verify content online, um, maybe using YouTube and your reporting, any questions that you might have on those more editorial focused tools, um, Miguel can answer. Um, just as a recap, uh, these are the things that we have gone through in this turbo session, uh, 1 p.m. today. Um, the audience is our central focus uh, in any sort of audience-led strategy. That's pretty plain. Um, and its success grows from how well we serve them. That's how I like to think about it anyway. Um, analytics helps us to understand our audience and their needs. Uh, this allows us to serve them better. Data is information. Insights uh, inf is information that you can act on. So data is information, insights is information that you can act on. Um, and look, this is just a little kind of bit of motivation for me at the end there. Um, I guess what I've seen in, in a lot of the roles that, that I've worked in over the last little while is that often, um, you know, often it might be the most junior person in the room that has the most knowledge about a particular area. And, and that seems to play out a lot uh, in digital. Um, so when I was at the ABC, I, I used to um, look after a group of 20 uh, social media guys across the business. Um, and we would have like a weekly uh, catch up and monthly catch up. And, and most of the time those guys were sort of dealing with challenges of not really being able to find their voice uh, and, and get a lot of this really critical stuff uh, in front of uh, senior executives. And I said to them, and I will say the same to you guys, is that you guys are the smartest people in the room uh, when it comes to this stuff. And you should really feel super confident in, in raising your voices. Um, so just say that for, uh, for those of you that are um, struggling with that. Um, Neil, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's all right, that's another GIF. That's all, that's all it is, yeah, go ahead. Oh look! Uh, it, in fact, I didn't I mean, didn't mean to jump the gun because what you've been invited has already happened. Belinda has a uh, has kicked off the questions uh, with uh, awesome. she she does a newsletter and is wondering whether these tools work with uh, uh, platforms like Mailchimp. That is an excellent question, and unfortunately, I do not have the uh, direct answer to that right now. Um, I think they do, um, but what I'll do is I will. Uh, Linda, I'll get an answer from the product team on that one and I'll get back to you. Um, actually, I'll circulate it to the whole group um, once I have that answer, but um, I'm pretty sure that they, they do. And there's another one from uh, Amanda, just their sessions, page views, unique users. It's a perennial one. <laughs> oh, um, I feel like I'm going to actually put somebody else on, on the call on the spot for this one. I'm just trying, there's a, there's a real depth of experience in this, uh, in this area. I'm just trying to work out who I'm going to be mean to right now. <laughs> Maybe Shannon Malloy is the guy. He's probably sitting there going, I knew Neil was going to call on me. But um, Shannon, if you haven't gone to the bathroom and just conveniently left your, uh, your screen running, um, do you want to jump on that one? Shannon has gone to the loo. Um, Rash? Rash has also gone to the loo. Um, Jane? Everyone's at the loo. Oh no, Jane, thank you. I'm in, I'm in. Sorry, can I, can I grab the question again? Yeah, so the question was sessions, page views, unique users, uh, which is the best? Ooh, um, so I'll give a really specific example. At Crikey, um, we've used sessions in the past, um, and that is because we have a registration wall um, that drives free trials. At the moment, we're actually testing um, a proper paywall. Um, but when I did an analysis around it, um, and got the R squared number, sessions have the closest relationship to trials. So. That's why I use that, which is like a super nerdy specific answer. Um, but I, I feel like of those three, it really depends like what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, if you're trying to get a lot of sessions out of a small group of users um, and building up users, 
is the kind of thing you've decided is going to bring the most value, then that's the one you're going to go after. But for us, session was um, most closely linked to trials, which were of most value to us. So that's why I went after sessions. Awesome. Does that, does that roundabout kind of response help answer that one? That um, Jane, it's uh, Miguel here. I'm a crikey subscriber, and that actually completely that actually describes how I became a subscriber. That's amazing. Oh, you're you, you are a genius. <laughs> wow, we that's that's just um, brilliant. Wow, no, so really interesting to hear you describe it in uh, such a fashion. Um, and uh, what what uh, just out of curiosity, mm. um, do what sort of uh, tools are you using to sort of help you make those deductions? Because the deductions are genius, but I'm just curious to know what what uh, tools you're using to to uh, arrive at that. Well, to, to get that information, I'll just quickly kind of preface this next response and say that we actually use Parsley for a lot of this now. Yep. Um, and so in Parsley, um, I believe it's just users and page views. So we do look at page views there. But get that data. Um, so the free trial data comes from WordPress. That's mm -hmm. one of our own data. Um, Actually, no, we do have event tracking set up in Google. Sorry, my mistake. Um, so I'd either pull, yeah, you can either pull it from WordPress or Google, um, and then, yeah, sessions data from um, Google Analytics, and then chuck it all in a spreadsheet. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. That's really interesting. And, and we're, we're quietly, uh, quietly thrilled that you did mention GA at the end there. But um, I did put um, a link to Parsley uh, in the chat there as well, if anyone wants to uh, to check it out. And and I thought that was such a, um, a beautiful way of putting it. I think those those different metrics will be more important to you depending on what you're trying to do at that particular point in time. So as you were noticing uh, with your session data. Uh, the more sessions they were doing, I, I guess, the more likely they are to subscribe. So you're you're focusing yeah. on trying to get them to to spend more time with you. Um, and and for us specifically, you know, we're like all subscriber run, so we might have a different focus to someone who's 50, 50 advertising subscribers or hundred percent advertising revenue. That really would like dictate which one you're going to choose. Hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and just to kind of, uh, Amanda's jumped in with another question there. So I think, um, like in terms of what is the closest to the, you know, eyeballs on a page theory that we used to, you know, talk about a lot. Um, look, I think it's 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 uniques. Um, unique audience is probably um, the one that that you know you probably use as that that general kind of stat that you're using, um, which is which is pretty helpful. I mean, it's a great one to to be able to talk to the size of your uh, audience in terms of you know, advertisers, but it's also a great one to be able to go back to, um, you know, to your bosses and say that we've been able to grow our audience uh, by 20% month on month or year on year. Um, it's also what Nielsen Net Ratings use, I guess, as the um, as the general rating for for the web as well. So, um, yeah, UA is is probably the one that you'll um, you'll use the most. Any other questions out there? Is anybody using Google Analytics right now that um, they're you know finding useful or they're finding not useful? Uh, any stories that you want to share? That's a bit shy today, Miguel. <laughs> I'm going to share another story um, Please, yes. about analytics. Um, we recently have done a lot of work around goal conversion. So now subscriber, um, yeah, subscriber signups, which sounds like a really obvious thing to have done. Um, I'm surprised we haven't set it up earlier, but anyway, we've got hold of it recently. Um, and at the moment, I'm keeping track of that data to get a better understanding of where people are coming to us organically um, in terms of last touch attribution. So looking at, you know, how many subscribers does Twitter drive, does Google drive, does Facebook drive, and now using that to inform our paid acquisition strategy. So, mm. you know, look, should we be spending 
more money. So for example, we've done a lot of testing around Facebook, but then it turns out there's a lot of people coming to us organically through Google, for example. So maybe we should be doubling down on our paid approach there or doing more tests um, around that. Um, yeah, that's been like a really useful thing for us recently that we've started exploring more through GA. Amazing. Jane, um, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about your role at Crikey and what you do there? Um, sure. So I'm the associate publisher. Um, I, I do a lot of things. So <laughs> I look after all our marketing. Um, as you can probably tell, I do a lot of our data analytics as well kind of across the user funnel. So I'm a big fan of um, the funnel. I think we spoke about that during the reader revenue course last year if people were in on that. Um, yeah, so basically analytics across all the funnel touch points. Um, I do a lot of like cash forecasting and um, budgeting and that kind of thing as well. Yeah, so like, and, and also like um, get involved with any like editorial product launches. I think like any small newsroom, it means wearing a lot of hats. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, is anybody using, are you guys using data at all to inform what stories you follow up on or um, using it in that in that sort of, in your news conferences or editorial meetings at all? Um, we do look at that data as to, yeah, that's, that's kind of more a question for the editorial team as to how much they use it and how often. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly like um, top of mind. Um, but because we don't have that impetus around, um, you know, huge amounts of clicks and stuff, um, for us, value in traffic is traffic that leads to, like, free trial sign-ups or newsletter sign-ups or subscriptions. Um, yeah, it can, mm. it's, it's a little harder to game those things, I think, just looking at the data. I know I've worked in newsrooms before. You can yeah. kind of just make it a game and just put out content that's going to drive that, um, yeah, drive clicks. Um, can, I, can I actually ask you a question and also you, Neil, that, it, that uh, somebody else has uh, asked because uh, it seems a good opportunity. So Allegra has said that she's um, uh, begun in a, a new industry and responsible for reporting analytics now. So just as, a, as somebody that's obviously quite knowledgeable about what you're doing, where's the best place to find information on what industry benchmarks are so that, you know, um, she can have a better understanding of how they're performing. Um, and Jane, where do you you go for that sort of stuff, or is there um, for new stuff? I mean, I look at a lot of basically anything that, um, like you know, the Newman Lab um, emails and things. They were like you know any reports. Yeah, very good, aren't they? Yeah, I'll uh, yeah. and Pew as well. I guess they do a lot of reports. DigiDay, um, they're all very news specific, I guess, but. Yeah, there's I, and they all kind of report the same things once something comes out, but they're all good starting out points. Yeah, I'll just throw that Neiman Lab Twitter account in there. And you said DigiDay too, didn't you? Yeah, and Pew, P-E-W. Oh, Pew, of course, yeah, Pew's yeah. got a lot of really good research. Yeah, yeah. I'll just throw those links in the chat there for you. So there you've, you've got a few great suggestions there from Jane. Thank you very much. Um, what, what I'd add to that is that um, if, if you're – if you're starting from scratch, um, and I've been in this position a couple of times where they, they, they didn't really feel that, that there was a, a comparative um, thing going on, uh, it, I just I would I just basically work on growth. So I want to I want to have if I'm working on users as I was at Storyful, I want to have more users uh, tomorrow than I did yesterday, um, and that's just a really really simple thing that, that you can do. Um, and then once you've got say you know, th say three months, say 12 weeks worth of data, you can then start to look at it and go, okay, well, what, what, what does normal look like? What are my fluctuations? And, and what are the sorts of things that I can uh, start to report on with a bit more confidence now? So, um, yeah, I think, you know, with things like email, there's, you know, MailChimp and Campaign Monitor and all of those guys have uh, industry-specific benchmarks um, that tend to be global. Um, but they're pretty helpful in terms of open rates and stuff like that. But often you might find that there's not something that's comparative. So um, with me, I, I just tend to work on just growth, um, just being better today than I was yesterday. 
And um, yeah, once you have, uh, you know, say twelve weeks, I think is a good uh, is a good period to really dive into it and, and have a look and see what's actually happening. All right, um, I'm just loving saying Carolyn Keane's um, avatar of the Highland cattle. I think you're right to the farm. Um, thanks, Allegra. Um, glad that was useful. Uh, any other questions that are sort of bubbling up? Now that we're sort of moving towards the end of the session. Miguel, do you have anything coming up that you want to tell, tell people about? Uh, yes, we actually will be uh, doing a series of live uh, training sessions starting. Uh, I, I'll, I'll make sure that I uh, share the dates when uh, they uh, are absolutely confirmed. Sorry, just just as I start talking, a plane is going over where I'm sitting. So. Do you know the uh, the super cool thing about Google Meet um, is that it's it's silencing that background noise for you. So that's indeed. Oh, is that right? That's fantastic. That's yeah. So you did not hear a thing. That is. No. I couldn't hear myself think. Um, yeah. No, we will be doing a series of live uh, training sessions coming up very very soon. So if uh, if however you heard about this, you will hear about uh, live sessions covering vaccine misinformation, for COVID. Uh, that is reporting on vaccine, vaccine misinformation and debunking it. Uh, looking at a special session for freelancers, particularly in the COVID period, uh, and uh, you know, working in quarantine, etc., and tools to sort of extend your work. We'll revisit Pinpoint as well, which is this fantastic database tool that um, you should really get on. Uh, and as always, there's the regular sort of uh, fundamental sessions. And um, again, if you if if any of you um, are in, interested, um, uh, and uh, certainly I've been trying to contact one or two organisations. I know that a few of you represent. Certainly, um, Jane, I've been talking to Peter Frey, uh, but if you can put in a word with your editorial team at Crikey, um, even though as a regular reader, I'm a little bit scared and intimidated about training people that smart. Um, but I would love to uh, get the opportunity if if they're interested in doing some Google training. So if you could put in a word, that would be great. And um, yeah, anybody here who has a, an editorial team would be fantastic, even ones that I'm not a subscriber of. So, uh, But you never know. I might probably end up signing up straight after I train your team anyway. So, But that would, that would be awesome if you could. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a strong hustle from Miguel D'Souza there. Um, mate, thank you so much for, for that. Um, unless there are any other questions, I might release you guys back into the wild um, to recapture your day. Um, again, thank you so much for making time. I, I know how hard that is. I will send out this, um, this video. I'll probably cut the bit where I had the wrong slides. Um, and uh, I'll also send through a glossary of terms, as I mentioned, uh, anything that, that uh, I did mention. Uh, I will send uh, through so you have those definitions um, and also notes as well so that you have basically every word I said uh, throughout this session so that you have all of that information. Anything you need, feel free to email me directly, neilvarko.google.com. Um, you've also got the great Miguel D'Souza here um, and feel free to email him also. Uh, that is absolutely it from me. I'm going to have a another coffee or a lie down or something, um, and I'll see you guys all next time.